Welcome back, fellow track walkers. It's been a while since we've been on here, and Travis has gone and done his thing, but today we've got uh, the one and only Jeff Keaton back with me, and we are going to discuss some things such as RCGP, what's been going on, why we haven't been recording, that sort of thing. So uh, welcome back, Jeff. How's things going? Man, it is fan-frickin-tastic. I am glad to be back. Had to take a little leave of absence myself there for a minute got really busy with work but uh things are starting to slow down and hopefully i'll get back at the track here real soon yeah we've missed you we haven't seen you out for a little bit and uh, people are starting to wonder if you're okay <laughs> <clears throat> i know i i think i've been this is the quietest i've been on facebook in like forever so I've been getting messages left and right of asking if i'm still alive and shit so yeah <laughs> i'm still alive life still here just been yeah. busy what do you what have you been up to not too much just working and um kind of been traveling a lot so just haven't had time to get to the track and kind of let things die down a little bit on facebook and the world and just kind of see uh see how see how some of the races played out i was sad to mess with yakima that looked like it was kind of a messy race but um nonetheless it looked like it was a fun layout yeah it, it actually worked out the weather was about as bad as it could be and still race so we still mm -hmm. raced and the track conditions for most people most of the weekend were really good uh there was a couple heats or a couple mains that might have gotten a little bit muddy but for the most part it was pretty decent it but it was cold and windy so that kind of sucked too but yeah we got her done and you know everyone got their championships and all that stuff and nct season's over now i uh, know next one i'll i'll definitely hit all of the ones next year good good got yeah. it all on my list right so you've been traveling a bunch for mm -hmm. work for work for work and stuff yeah okay all right yeah yeah i've just been uh just been Doing the work thing for a little bit. I had to recoup some money. Yeah, sometimes we got to adult once in a while and, and get back to reality. Yeah, it's not fun, but, you know, you got to do it. <laughs> well, we sure have missed you. It's 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 fun having you around, and, you know, the banter back and forth is always exciting, so... Well, but, we got we got a, we got some... We got a catching up to do. We got some lost time, so, you know, you... You've been you traveled outside of your area, which I was, I'm I'm impressed. You know, you said you were going to go to RCGP. I kind of didn't believe you because that involved you actually leaving your little 300 mile radius. Right. But right. you actually got on an airplane and flew to a race, and um, and you raced. I think I, you did I, race, right? I mean, you, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, if you want to call it racing, I I had the worst luck all weekend, but uh, I went and I had fun, so that's all that matters, you know. Right. But yeah, the RCGP, we might as well talk about that while we're on the subject. So you got to officially compete in the RCGP RC2 class. Yes. You got to witness RCGP live instead of on YouTube. Yes. So I have a ton of questions. Okay. Because you're the first person that I've talked to that's not a pro that's actually attended the RCGP races. Right. So and and you're pretty honest. Even though you even though you have a hard on for the RCGP and you love the RCGP, <laughs> I still think that your responses will be honest and truthful. So I can respect yes. that. Perfect. So going to the RCGP, we'll do we'll do the RC two class first. Let's talk about that because okay. that's your racing, how that format, the spec tire. Which is something you're against, other than a, it was a pro line tire, so you had to have been somewhat okay with it. But the spec tire in general. So, give me your full thoughts on the RC2 side of things. Well, the RC2 side of it is more, you know, it's all the amateurs, basically, pretty much amateurs, 
and um, I I really enjoyed it because everyone's running the same class. There isn't e buggy, e truggy, sportsman, expert, this that, and everything else. Everybody's running nitro buggy in one. Uh, how class. many entries? I think it was about ninety three. Something so like that. So 93 nitro buggies. Yeah, they didn't meet their goal, but uh, it was still their highest turnout for RC2 all season. Right. And the the level of competition okay. was, it ranged everywhere from, um, I would say, sportsman drivers all the way up to guys that are pretty legit. Pretty legit yeah. that can race on the, I, at the I national level. So. Right. It was good. You kind of know where you stand after something like that, and you know this. You mentioned the spec tires, and uh, I, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I do, and I don't like the idea of a spec tire because unless you're going to impound the tire after every time you run, then it's not really a spec tire after that. After it goes back to somebody's pits or somebody's hotel that night. And now I've seen it in at two different spec tire races this year where it is no longer a spec tire once it leaves the track. Well, well they, they, they're they pre-glued, right? Correct. But yeah. they specifically told us no saucing. Oh. So. Yeah. Well, they can't control that. Nice. Exactly. Yeah, so right. then, then it defeats the whole purpose of a spec tire, kind of. So. There were people right. saucing, and, uh, you know, the tire that they chose probably wouldn't have been my first choice of tire for the conditions, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a terrible choice. It, it lasted, you could have run one set pretty much all weekend, maybe two, with the amount mm -hmm. of track time we've got, we got. So that, that side of it was good. The tire wear was, was super easy to manage. Uh, so... I, I'm on the fence okay, about well, the spec tire thing. Well, let's let's start from the beginning. So you show up because I want a kind of a rundown of it's because you're going to a race you've never been to this style race, a different right. format, different rules, all that stuff. So you get to the race, you kind of check out the track, you see how things are going, and then let's start on practice day. So how did your how did practice day work? Practice day for us was five rounds total of practice, controlled practice in, in heats. Um, and I think they were just kind of random, but maybe there was a little bit of uh, uh, seating, pre-seating that had gone on because there was a lot of fast guys in the 10th practice heat. Okay. So th there was probably a little so, bit of help there when they were setting that so up. So semi-random. Right, right, which it's yeah. practice. It doesn't really matter. So um, we had three rounds of open practice. Didn't qu didn't count for anything. No seating, no anything. Three rounds of controlled open practice. Uh, you can run any tire you wanted to. Of course, we chose to run the, the spec tire, try to get right. set up and used to it. Uh, and then after that was two rounds of controlled seating practice. And this was all in one day? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Including whatever the RCGP guys did that was fit in between all day long. Oh, wow. so they had practice too. So, um, But I think great, the practice started around 8 a.m. and was done by 7-ish maybe on Friday. Something like that. Wow. Yeah. So... I mean, okay. it doesn't sound like a lot of entries, and it doesn't sound like a lot of classes and that kind of thing, but the track was busy all day long. There was hardly any well, yeah. time. You know, well, and, with, I mean, with running five rounds, I mean, with 90 cars, is uh, you know, it's completely doable in that, yeah. in that amount of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I'm sure you're running 12, 15 car qualifiers. I think they were 12. I think the, the stand 12. Yeah. comfortably held 12. Okay. So, So yeah, that's totally doable. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, so we got lots of track time, lots of practice. You know, I don't know anybody that really needs more than five practice runs no. 
<laughs> I agree. So, so how did how did you seed? You seeded pretty decent, right? I did. I got uh, I got one really good seeding run in because I think they took your best two consecutive laps, something like that. So I must have cut the course or something to seed that well. Okay, but I don't know. Um, but no, I think I seeded around twenty eighth. My other seeding round mm-hmm. was just mediocre. So. But that, I was happy with that out of 93. Right. And then... Um, so I then had, how did qualifying start? How did how, did, how was qualifying? How did they... Qualifying on Saturday, we did... It was three rounds of IFMAR qualifying. Okay. And then after the three rounds of IFMAR qualifying were done, they did a qualifying race, which... Um, you were already seated or qualified into the main that you were going to start racing on on Sunday. And the qualifying race was a heads-up race with a gate start. And that was just to set your position within the main that you had qualified into. Okay. That so, kind of seems pointless to me. Yes, yes, I think it was. I think it was just for more track time. It was to get people... Especially especially with the gate start. I mean, it makes no difference on the gate start. Yeah, we'll get into the I gate mean, start, I'm sure, here in yeah. a bit. But, um, yeah, I didn't... We didn't... There was a couple of us that left out of our camp. We, we left and went and bought, you know, prime ribs and... Right. You know, went and barbecued instead of running that qual qualifying race and it's funny because I was supposed to start seventh in that qualifying race and I skipped it completely and left and when I came back on Sunday I started sixth in the main so I have, <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> what the point of it was. You moved up without racing that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> leaving early was the best thing I could have done that day I think <laughs> uh Okay. Yeah. All right. So that so that's that that's just that's pointless. So there was no need for that one. There was no need for that. I think it was more for more track time. Uh, people want to, you know, get more heads up racing, so they put that in there to get some heads up racing. And those races use the starting gate, which I don't I don't know why they did it for that race in particular for all the the qualifying heats. Oh, we're going we're gonna to get in the starting gate. I got a whole thing. We'll have all 10, 20 minutes on the start gate. That's just stupid. Okay, so so qualifying was over, and then yeah. you're going into mains. Mains on and Sunday. And then how did they – how was the mains run? Was it, was it the ladder style, or was it like ABC? It was ladder style, like the Worlds. So you had okay. evens and odds. And it, I think it was the top four out of each – bumped to the next next one so if you're in uh one what what would it be one sixteenth or one thirty second yeah even and you bumped out your top four you would bump into the next which would be one sixteenth or one eighth even so you'd have one race in between because they did a b a b a b so um your car would go to impound to be inspected they check your fuel tank and width and all that kind of stuff right and Mm -hmm. that part was I'm all for teching cars that's I'm all for that but with that amount of time in between you'd basically get your car back halfway through the you know the the race that you're right you're waiting for so you you'd have 10 minutes to get ready for your next main and each main was right. 20, 20 minutes. So, you know, there's there's probably some maintenance you'd want to do after running a 20-minute right. main. So that was really tight. You'd basically get your car back and you'd jump back in to, you know, warm up. Warm up the car and, and get ready for your next main. Mm-hmm. So that part was a little bit, uh, it was tricky. It was, it, was, it was hectic and it was busy and it, you know... It kept you busy. Now, who who was doing the tech? Was it RCGP people, or was it uh, Thunder Alley people that RCGP hired? Or 
I am not sure. I didn't recognize the the guys doing it. I think it was so. I don't. I didn't recognize okay. them. So I'm not sure. I think they were Thunder Alley guys. Yeah. So. Okay. So now you're on to you're on to your mains. So yeah. typical main then. So I mean, kind of like the Roar Nationals. Pretty much the same there. Same as Ifmar and all that. Right stuff. Yep, yep. You, you get so, your bump. You get your bump, and you have one race in between before your next one, which is another twenty minutes. <laughs> right. So yep. lots of track time if you're and able then to. Bump how long on was Sunday. the? How long were the semis? The semis, I believe, were thirty minutes. Okay, and then the main itself, forty-five. Now, did they do an LCQ at this race? Yes. Yeah, for the guys that didn't bump out of the uh, semis, they got to run an LCQ to try to make it into the main. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so now my next question is, so there's always the big talk about the referees up on the driver's stand. Right. And how how they call for rough driving and all that stuff. How was how was that experience? Um, was they it good, actually bad. Was it consistent? I think it was pretty good. Um, I actually got called for a, a drive-through penalty at one point. So, oh, um, look at you! Yeah, I was... that doesn't surprise me. But <laughs> I had a really bad run, and it was uh, I w- went over side by side over a jump beside somebody, and I I must have crossed over and got into them in the air. So, but that's my fault. My fault. I got, I got penalized for it, and that's fine. That's how it goes. You know. Right. So, but no, I think the the okay. the refereeing was fair, and they were, uh, they were calling stuff out. You know, I I don't know if anybody got docked for not marshalling, because it seemed to take forever to get marshals out, and they had threatened to penalize people for that, but. I don't know if anybody actually did, but I know there was some penalties for poor driving. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Oops, hang on. I think you're breaking up. Okay. All right, now I can hear you. (laughs) There was a little delay, like it was breaking up or something. Yeah, it was delayed a little bit. All right. All right, so that's 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 about what I expected for the RC2 class. So okay. it's kind of like, you know, if someone wanted to relay it to something else that's close by us, it, it's really close or really similar to the Roar Nats. Correct. You got one class, except the Roar Nats has, you know, 200 entries, one class, ladder system mains, they have referees, so it's pretty much identical to Aurora Nationals as Correct. far as if you're going to compare it to something. Yep. Would that be accurate? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It was a good. Okay. It was good. I like the, the, the ladders and stuff. I like that. Yeah, I do too. All right, so now how about the RCGP race, the watching the pros and stuff? You've You've watched the videos on YouTube and – and their Facebook page and all that stuff. How is the experience being there compared to watching it on YouTube? Um, it was really quite good to watch live. I mean, I've watched so many big races with big name drivers that, um, you know, I'm kind of used and I, I understand how it all works and and the format and all that kind of stuff. So watching them was was on par with with another big race maybe a little bit more elevated as far as uh professionalism of the way things were set up but um as far as watching it at first hand it's probably similar to watching another big race live okay uh, all right know, the, so so you bring in this you bring in this word professionalism right so right. You, like this is this is the big key rcgp word 
we're more professional than everybody else. What made RCGP more professional than everybody else? Because um, I got a few things that that contradicts that phrase. Right. But in your opinion, where does it at? Well, you know, as far as like the whole pit setup, how they have the 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 pro t- pits set up with their tents and all the the banners around the track, and then the uh, you know Mao doing the the I don't know if he was race directing or if he was just being a referee or what. That was confusing to me as to what was being heard over our PA versus what was being heard on uh, the recording that's going to be produced and sent out or what people were watching online. I don't know who's listening to who. But, um, you know, Mao was was pretty pretty exciting to listen to. Um, it was... The format was pretty good. I I do think that they're limiting themselves by only having one heat of RCGP. Right. I, I think that's going to be. I personally, I think they should have maybe two heats, or maybe three, depending on if they can get enough people to. Well, they, that's the problem. They don't have. They don't get enough entries. Right. Right. So, so if you split if you split twelve people up because that's all they're getting, if you split twelve up, then it's you know to me it would almost make it a little more exciting in its way too because for me the the top five is really all you ever watch anyway. Pretty much. So if you split twelve cars and you have two heats of six, at least the six cars. I mean, you're really you're only going to be watching the top three of each heat, but at least you're going to have multiple heats. Right, right. That would that would probably give more coverage to film. Wouldn't look as spectacular on the track because there's only six cars. But you know, right. maybe maybe they need to have some. You know, the wild card guys actually have to qualify in at the race. Something like that. I don't know. You know, yeah. through the through the qualifiers, and if they finish top whatever, they actually get to run in the RCGP class with the big boys. I don't know. But uh, the you know we might as well get into the gate starts because that relates to this where with with one heat everybody makes the main or everybody makes every single race and then they do all this qualifying and then they put them on this gate to start them and it's complete chaos when it drops nine right. nine out of ten times I like the gate start idea. Um, but it just needs to be refined, I think, because it was it didn't look professional when those cars were crashing into each other as soon as they got off the the gate. There was a couple of couple of heats though where they all made it through the first couple corners, like two, three, four wide, and that was spectacular. But that was very rare. Right. So. Well, here's my here's my take on the on gate starts and. I was around in the RC Pro Series days when we did the gate starts then, back, you know, in the 90s. I've done gate starts, you know, and all throughout my career. Like, it's people have tried it. They've gone away. They go reason, away for a reason because they suck. Right. Like, they're fun for spectators. They're fun for people who just like to take out an entire field, but at big events, major events, we did gate starts at uh, one of the race time races one time a couple years ago, and it was a disaster. Like, right. it's just gate starts are not meant for big events because it's just, it it kills the point of qualifying. Yeah, it does. It completely no el- eliminates all all of the effort that's been put into qualifying completely right you know you could you could qualify dead last and you'd still probably be top 5 if you were smart going into that first corner coming out of the first yeah. corner because you could just hang back and wait for the chaos and drive around everybody yeah so i mean the minute the minute i heard that rcgp was going to use gate starts there i just laughed because again this goes back to my critiquing of 
Joseph and Keenan and all the guys that are running this RCGP thing. It's like they always they they have this feeling that they can do something and they can do it better than anybody else, right? Right. And we've been through gate starts for years and decades and they've never worked. So the fact that they bring a gate start to this race, I had to sit back and laugh because here you are again, Joseph thinking he knows better than everybody else and I can do it and I can do it better than everybody else. And it's a complete failure, just like it is at every other major race that we've had gate starts. Yeah. Like gate starts are not meant for big time races. They're meant for club races. They're meant for bashing. They're meant for a one off type of race where there is no qualifying. It is all strictly heads up racing and you know it's not it's just not designed for a major event especially with the pro level drivers if the pro level drivers can't do it then there's no way in hell anybody else can because those guys can drive like nobody else right so it's like you know what's the point in it yeah no it's i think it was it was more of an experiment on their part to to see the feasibility of, it, of it. It's, and no, it's their ego. It's the whole thing of we can do things better than anybody else, and yet it didn't work. Just like it didn't work for anybody else. It's it, there. There is no experimenting with a gate start. Let's be honest. Now, you well, can't. There's no way that you can do it unless you have a thirty yard wide thing where you can separate the cars by feet not inches right 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 if you're starting them side by side right correct but then if you stagger them so that they're front to back then that completely defeats the whole purpose of a gate start yeah so yeah i I agree i agree the closest the closest thing to a gate start that actually somewhat works is the manufacturer's cup and chico when they the way how they do it Uh uh-huh and um, I've watched the way how they do it, and that's as close to. Oh, but they don't actually use a gate. Your your pit guy still holding the cars, but theirs is just like going stages. Uh huh. So there's like five cars in the front, five cars in the back, and then the rest bring up a third row, and then the first five go, the second five go, and then you know. Right. Yeah, we used to have a gate up in Canada that we were using way back in the day, and it was really cool. It was all computer-controlled, and it had these little solenoids, and they could time the the interval in between each gate drop, and they would all drop individually if you wanted to, or, you know, it was completely adjustable. So that was kind of cool. You could set it for, like, 0.2 of a second or 0.5 or 1 or whatever, and it would do the same interval in between each one as it, it dropped them so that would that kind of works but i don't i don't know if it if it's solving a problem or not no it's not it's because then you you might as well just do the down and quiet and and go on a staggered way right right i mean the down and quiet doesn't look professional either though so and you can get flame outs and and you know well gee are... i wonder if that's because rc car racing isn't a fucking professional sport <laughs> Because it's a fucking hobby that we enjoy doing. <laughs> Sorry. I <laughs> can't pass that one up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So, you know. so okay. So, let's kind of, let's, let's, let, we're going to go back to just a little bit now. Yeah. So, here's back to this professionalism thing, right? Yeah. So, RCGP claims that they are more professional than any other race across the world, right? right? This is this is their big claim, and this is one of the big things that I've been personally banging them on is it's it goes back to the whole thing of here's a series that just comes out of nowhere and instantly lays claims that they're going to do things better than everybody else, that they're going to change the way that we 
view RC racing, that we look at RC racing, they're going to make it more professional. They're going to make it more pronounced. So after experiencing and being at one of their events, me personally, outside looking in, I wasn't there. So it's hard to get the get the live feeling opposed to the view the youtube side of things but for me i don't see where they're any more professional than a race time entertainment race right right if 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 i'm if i'm comparing rcgp to dave lycom's race time races dave is a hundred times more professional his his atmosphere at his races he has banners lining the entire track from driver stand all the way around the back to the driver stand okay. he has if if i was to compare podium pictures and i had the rcgp podium pictures and i had a race time entertainment podium pictures there is no comparison right dave's podium pictures are at 10,000 times better than any of the RCGP events. Right. So if you're if you're talking professionalism and they sit here and say that they are doing it better or they're going to do it better than everybody else, to me that's bullshit because that's they're not. Right. They have a different format, but if you look at the race time races and if you look at even DNC, DNC maybe not have doesn't have quite the amount of banners around their track but if you look at dnc's pit setup with all the manufacturers hundreds of manufacturers with all their tents and you have 10 or 15 mugen tents and 10 or 15 jq tents and 10 or 15 proline tents and agama and all the manufacturers lined up that looks pretty fucking professional to me right yep rather than their two or three or four that they got set up yeah, I think there was, uh, what was there, one, two, three, four, five up in there. And, and due to the wind and everything that they uh, that we had down there on the Thursday and Friday, um, I'm sure it wasn't everything they wanted it to be as far as the tents being set up and, and you know, the banners and everything all up in that area because they would have been torn down by the wind. So maybe maybe that affected a little, but it did look cool with the with the pro pits and and all that stuff set up with the fancy tents and everything. So that was pretty cool. But but is it something that you've never seen before? Is let me let me ask it this way. Was anything did anything go on at this race that you have never seen before that gave you that wow factor that says Wow, this is something new that is just amazing that I wish every track across America could adapt. Um, the one class. <laughs> the one class and all the track time at a big race. Well. Quote, unquote, big race. That's, that's yeah, the I mean, one how, thing. That, to me, to me the, this wasn't a big race because there's only 90 entries. Okay. All right, but the en- n- entry number defines the the size and quality of a race. Not the quality, but size certainly. Yeah. Okay. So people want to go to a bigger sized race versus a better quality experience. See, well, that's well, okay. So, so go off. Let's talk about the quality. What defines quality? Uh, track time quality to you and quality to me would be could be that that's that's interpretation of what you like opposed to what other people like right this is true so when when you're talking track time again i can i can quote you a ton of races that you can get as much track time as you want now by running i i do a uh, yeah I do agree. The only thing I do like now for me locally or in the U S the roar nationals has always been my favorite race because it is one class because it is, it does give you a sense as a driver, as me as a driver, it gives me the ability to stack up where I'm at 
year after year. So if I go to the Roar Nats every single year and I make the quarterfinals every year, then I'm not improving and I'm not getting worse, right? I right. can kind of gauge where, how good or how bad I'm getting year after year at the Roar Nationals. Right. So that that style thing I do agree with I think that the RCGP does bring that element to where if I went to an RCGP race in the US every single year then it would give me a good gauge of where I'm at based on there it's harder because you're still not getting the best true in the nation true there's, there's, a, the there's RCG, a lot of people you know, that there's a lot of people that weren't there so yeah, I, I so I mean, it, it is hard to gauge. Like the Roar Nationals, to me, would would still be ten times more meaningful than the RCGP race because it still gives me a better idea of where I'm at ability wise. Right, but I think now, that's kind of where they're trying to go with it is to have something like the Nationals that runs all over the world um, every year. Instead of like the world, yeah, but the which problem is every is, two years. Yeah, but see, the problem is, is at if you take the Roar Nationals, I'm competing against the best. I'm competing right. against Mayfield. I'm competing against the best racers in the world right. or in the U.S. And I'm not doing that there. I'm competing against the best sportsman drivers or amateur drivers I wouldn't even say amateur because there was paid drivers that were racing in the RC2 class oh yeah so but but it's still not it's to me the Roar Nationals would still be more meaningful and more beneficial than the RCGP because they're they're, they're not separating us we're not we're not treated different right and 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 you got to even admit at that at the at the RCGP you're treated different than the pro guys. Well, yeah, absolutely. So for sure. So for me, I don't like that because to me, the pro guys they're no different than me. Right. They're just better than me. <laughs> but but they're not they're not any different. Their equipment isn't any better than mine. They're they're you know their attitudes and their mentalities and everything else is no different than me but yet the RCGP is going to treat them better than me and for me I don't like that like why I can see that. why should they get treated different yeah no I can see because that especially where forever and I'm not especially where we're we're actually paying out of our pockets to be there <laughs> right we're paying you know, our entry fees like for me I don't like being segregated to me it's like they're they're back to segregation like the way how it's always set up and the way how it looks is is all the all the people that don't matter you guys go pit over there but we're going to put all the cool people right here and you can't come and hang out at the cool people's tents because you know cameras might be around and stuff like that so you guys kind of stay over there but all the cool people can stay up here See, I don't know what the rules were on that because there was there was some RC2 people pitting with the with their teams in the pro pits, like had their easy up set up. Oh, behind. see, because I was told. So. Yeah, see, I was told that I couldn't pit with JQ and Max. Yeah, I would have yeah. to go pit somewhere else. Yeah, maybe. And maybe I'm like, that you know, fuck true, you. But, yeah. No, it that that could be true. Because so that that alone, that, that kind of pisses me off because I feel like you know I'm a team guy, but yet if I go to this race, I don't get treated as a team guy. I'm right. I'm a fucking peon that has to go pit over here with the other JQ guys, but we're the meaningless JQ guys. The real JQ guys get to go pit over here in the cool pit area. You uh -huh. know, fuck you. Like no, right. we're all no. the same. We're all on the same team. Yeah. No, I, I I I can see that, and I agree with it. Um, the uh, the JQ guys sure outnumbered just about everybody else there, though. <laughs> well, that's all because of Keenan. Yeah, did they 
did did JQ pay for everybody's flights and and all that kind of you stuff? You know, I, I I was beginning to wonder. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I doubt it because he's such a fucking tightwad. But uh, how many entry shit, fees? Probably, did they you... probably offered some sort of parts or something for yeah. to get them guys there. I don't know. How many entry fees did uh, JQ pay for? <laughs> I'm Holy sure it, was, shit. it had to have been a bunch because, man, that was it was a lot of JQ guys there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Well, Keenan gets the credit for that one because he, man, he was, he was blowing up all of our JQ team pages. Yeah, and man. just trying to get people to go and stuff. So uh, that's that's all Keenan. Keenan does a hell of a job. He does. He's awesome. Does a great but, job with the team. So, so yeah. So uh, to me, to me, it's back to the same old thing that I have no doubt especially in your experience the group that you went with you probably had a freaking blast like it was a fun race the people were fun the racing was good even yep. though you did shitty yep it, the the people and the environment made up for your shitty performance right yeah best race i've ever been that, to that's pretty accurate so yep so in all of that, I get it. I get how people can say, yeah, I had a great time at the RCGP. I had a great time at the RCGP. But at the end of the day, it's just another race. There is nothing any more special about this race. They're not doing anything to change the industry. They're not doing anything to bring in new blood they're not doing anything that's going to make the industry better or bigger in my opinion you know i don't know once they get the whole production all together and the way it looks like after the post-production um being there and seeing it live it it's very similar to other big races but seeing their post-production and their uh you know their promotions and their little videos and stuff that they post they do a great job with that and they do. if if we can get that out to uh you know the average rcer that's that's maybe not into racing and they see it and they want to get into racing then maybe who knows other than that i don't see anything else being any different as far as promotions to try to get people into the hobby I don't I don't I, I don't see how they're doing anything different in that respect other than yeah. the the post production and the the quality of the videos that they're taking and uh you know the way they're promoting that side of it. Well, I mean time will tell. We'll see, but but the claims that that's being made now, I can I can understand why other manufacturers won't get on board and it's not just because it's a JQ thing but it's because there's so many events and so many races nationwide that the manufacturers especially in the states and stuff there's no need for them to get behind the RCGP when it doesn't benefit them in any way you know what what any what needs to happen at these things and I've mentioned it before and I was surprised that nobody's picked up on it you got to have local media coming to cover these things mm-hmm. to get the word out to people in the area that this is actually happening there's two world champions here racing this weekend racing what RC cars oh my god I didn't know they raced those I better go check that out that'd be kind of cool you know, yeah. you see it on the news or in the newspaper, whatever. But no races, very few races, actually have local media come and check it out. I and agree. Do, do a little bur- blurb. To me, I think that is missing the boat big time. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. No matter how small that is in the newspaper or whatever, that is so easy to make happen, and it's not being done. Right. Yeah, I, th- I agree. I think there's there's a lot of things that we could do, or that promoters can do, that would benefit the local crowd more than the national crowd. Right. We're we're advertising and that, and, to ourselves at this point. 
Right. So. All right. Yeah. Well, interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, that's enough RCGP talk. Yeah. Yeah. To me, I'm it over was, that. Well, you know, to me, it was it was probably one of the best races. Like you said, the crowd I was with uh, would be number one, and then the amount of track time, the one car. Uh, not having to wait around for a gazillion classes, you know, that was it. That was the. Two All right. Well, things. now let's really quick though. Let's talk about Kyle. Kyle. I was yeah. shocked to see that Kyle didn't do as good as I was expecting him to do. Um, it, it, his his result in the main wasn't what uh, what he was capable of because he had a problem with his car part way through. But, oh, okay. Yeah, he qualified fifth overall. When, yeah, but I still even expected better than that. Uh, that kid yeah. is fast. Yeah, but <laughs> some of these other kids were fast too. That race, yeah, two or three times than, a week. Kyle races he's once better a month. than Westergaard. Oh, he was. Yes, definitely. And I and I still and I love Cameron Lime. I think that kid has so much potential and is fast. But I still think Kyle is better than him. Yeah, I mean. Kyle Kyle only races once a month. And he's only raced about eight times all year. So how many times have all these other guys raced this year? You know, I mean, to practice. He doesn't practice, doesn't do anything. But all the track time you got, he should have done better. You You can't show up at a race and expect to be number one, you know, with with that level of competition. When can too. No, when you have his talent level, when you're as good as he is, and he's freaking good. Yes, he is. When you're as good as he is, and you have that much track time, either he just wasn't feeling it this weekend, he was kind of, or he was a little off, and just wasn't feeling it, or he struggled with the track itself, or something, but something was off, because he should have won that. He was still, to me... Out of the people that that were there, he to me is still the fastest that was that was there. I I think he's very capable of of winning that, or of, he was capable of winning that race. There was a lot of factors, you know. Luck has a lot to do with it in certain things, you know, and you know, there's some bad bad things that happen on a gate start or. You know that kind of thing that that puts you behind the eight ball, and and to recover from those things in that kind of format is extremely difficult. Yeah, so, I agree. Uh, he 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 impressed all of us, and we we're very proud of him. And you know, it, it was unfortunate that he had some bad luck in the main, but uh, that's racing. That's how it goes. And you know, right. I think I think he learned a lot. We all learned a lot. So he'll be he'll be stronger for the next one for sure. All right. But he's got the talent. So to he'll do put it. like he'll put like seven laps on everybody at the next NCT race instead of just four. He probably could if he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's that's how far behind we are up here. It's it, I know, right? it's really eye opening when you go to these races. And I've been to the races, so I totally expected it. But I know there's there's a lot of people that go to these races for their first time, and they're like, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm dominating at home, and and then I come here, and I'm in like the G main. What the hell, you know? But yeah, yeah the level of competitions just off the charts when you go to these races. All right, well let's switch gears. So we got um, the Fallout race coming up. Yeah, how's that? How's that looking? That is, I think it's going to be big. There's some big names coming up. You heard that Drake yeah, was, was coming. Yeah, kind of, I was kind of upset. There's a bunch of big names that were going to come that are backed out now, and now they're going to that uh, U.S. Open race. Yeah, they're going to, the, to that race in Texas, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of unfortunate. But, uh, you know, Drake's coming. Um, Wally's coming. Watlet, Nick Watlet. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard of a few others that were coming up as well that uh, – a lot of people probably haven't heard of, but uh, they're going to be <laughs> they're going to be fast too. Yeah, that's that's the funny thing. You go to these these big races, or you go to any race down south, and you, people you've never heard of just kicking ass. 
Super well, fast. I'm hoping to make it. I'm I'm hoping to make it. I'm still not 100% yet, but I'm hoping to make it. But if I make it, we got to do an over under on if Drake is going to like cuss me out at the race or not. Hey, I heard that JQ and Drake were shaking hands and they they made oh, I'm up. I'm sure they're, they they oh, they, they, they they're, they're mending have. it. They're mending their uh, their differences. So, yeah, they might have so well, maybe maybe there's hope for me then. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know if there's any hope for you. <laughs> I doubt it too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you yeah. don't like me. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah. this. I think I think it'll probably be just fine. You just got to show up. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm working on it. I'm gonna go just for Drake, just so I can be there for him. Yeah. Maybe. He'll let me pit for him. I was just going to say that. You need to pit for him. Yeah, he, was, he was pitting That'd for Camden awesome. Lime, and, man, he gets it done in the pits, I'll tell you. Yeah, he does. He's he's yeah, he... whew, He's got it down. But He yeah. was at the RCGP race? Yeah, he showed up with Ronda. No shit. He wasn't racing, but he was there. Interesting. There was there was quite a few people there that weren't racing that were just hanging out. Yeah. Barry Baker showed up. Um, God, there was a bunch that I saw that Cody King was there. Yeah. Was he all in his Kyosho shit or is he in some other gear now? No, I don't. I don't recall if he was wearing RC gear or not. I don't think he was, but he was. Oh. He was hanging out and doing some pitting for some of the Hot Buddies guys. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, there's that. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but he was there, so that was kind of cool. All right. Well, that's good. That's that's see, that's good info. That's good. That's good being aware of your surroundings. <laughs> so always... Cody King's going to be going to Hot Bodies. I like it. More than likely. More than likely. Yeah. You know, you know I don't know if it, what capacity he will uh, he will be in as far as position on the team, but that's who he was hanging out with was Hot Bodies. So yeah. All I right. think he I think right. he was actually pitting for Cole. Oh yeah, you've okay. seen you've seen Cole drive before, right? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, Cole and I are. You're what? You got a good thing with Cole or no? No, we are, yeah, we're we're good. Okay, Cole's there was fuck- a time there when yeah, there was a time there where uh, he was pissed at me for a while, but he got over it. <laughs> Cole <laughs> is awesome. Oh my Cole god, Cole is a good dude. He is so cool to hang out with and. Uh, man, watching him drive is insane. Yeah, when he's on, he's he's really fast. Holy crap, he was insane. It's the control he has over that car and what he does with it is just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like Cole. Cole's a good dude. Yep, yep. I uh, and funny. He's I funny. actually I turned in yes, very funny. I actually uh, turned into a fanboy for once. And oh I, shit. I stole one of his bodies from him. Had to bring it home. Had him sign it. Uh oh. It's my first one. I had to. It was uh I, I And just... you chose Cole out of everybody. Interesting. Yep. yep. He's just so cool on and off the track, so Yeah, he is. So yeah, I'm a fanboy. Alright. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so Fallout, we've got uh what is that, two weeks, week and a half ish? Mm-hmm. Um, it's on this side of the mountains this time. Down in yeah, they said it won't be as cold, so that's a good thing. No, it should be 50-ish, probably. Okay. Depending on what the weather's doing, you know, somewhere around 50, 45 to 50 probably. Um, okay. Probably won't have any snow, thank God. The It'll probably be raining. But well, we're right, indoors. So we're cares? indoors, exactly. So... You know, and my advice: don't pit inside the building. Well, I ain't gonna pit out in the fucking rain. Well, that's why you have tents. It's still rain and still ground and everything is gonna get all nasty and wet. Yeah, well, 
trust me, pitting inside those buildings, I've done it for the last two years, and it is not much fun. <laughs> it's no. loud and smoky, and so I think we're going to attempt to pit outside at this one. And well, I'm going to be pit by you. So, all right. Well, we got a spot for just, you. Just make sure that you know I'm not getting rained on. Yep. No. Nope. We'll have tents. I'm, I'll bring an extra tent if I have to. No big deal. All right. Yep, that'll be fun. I don't know what we're using for tires yet. It's probably going to be, my guess, from the last two barn-style races, arena races, it was probably hole shots initially, and then like a, maybe a slide lock or a reflex or something like that later yeah. on if it grooves up depending on the kind of dirt we've never raced in this building before so we're not 100% sure what the tires are going to do well that's good yeah so yep. just go with everything yeah pretty much bring everything you got yeah <sighs> so what's what's up with carpet racing what do you what are you doing there you got a car yeah, I've been I've been doing some carpet here and there. Okay. Um, just on at the local track in Boise. Yeah, that's it. You're digging it, but it's yeah. I mean, it's fun. It's um, their track is super tiny, so I mean, right. we're doing like ten, eleven second laps. Yeah, but it's still. Um, I mean, it's fun and it keeps me active. <laughs> so. Um. So, Die Hard had their first race, it was last weekend while we were at the RCGP, 163 entries, I think it was. That's Something awesome. Like that. Yep, yep. So that's, uh, you got to come down and check it out, because it's... I am. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, I'll make a couple of their races, their series races. Yeah, and they'll, they're having a big one at the Hobby Expo this year, which is, I think, a two or three day race something like that so that'll be a good do you one. know what month what month is that I think January okay good it's at the fairgrounds indoors all that good stuff you know so the hobby show is kind of interesting with all the different vendors and clubs and stuff like that all doing their thing yeah I'll definitely have to make that yeah yeah that's fun yep um, we've got our new car coming out we should have them this week they're at they're at the distributor, so they'll be shipped out. And yeah, we'll have them this. Right, is that is that a pro kit too? You can buy that. <laughs> Does that make you a pro? No, it's a Gen three. Oh, <laughs> oh. So you're still not a pro if you get that car, but you're just wow. a pro if you get the eight scale, scale car. That's right. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so what other kind of news do you have? What's what's new? I haven't talked to you in a while. What, uh... Me? I've been out of the loop. I've been keeping a low profile. I haven't been saying much or doing much. So you haven't I've, been I'm... scoping out the, the grapevine at all for anything? No, not really. I mean, we got, you know, silly season's going to be starting to spike up here a little bit. Yeah, let's so... talk about that. Let's talk about that. What, uh, what do you foresee happening with silly season like what's up with calf why what's his results and stuff this year since switching to s works have been less not as good yeah, as i don't his, know what he's capable of I yeah think. i mean i don't know how long of a how long of a s works contract he did i know his yokomo contract's pretty long but i think the s works thing was just a year and if it was just a year i i can't imagine they're going to keep him on again which right, means I, he'll have to switch or or stop racing eight scale altogether. I'm sure it's not a it's not a cheap contract, so it's costing yeah, them I a pretty penny. Yeah, I can't imagine that they're gonna. If it's only a year, that I can't imagine they're gonna keep him on. Right, right. But I'm sure there's gonna be there'll be there'll be some changes. I think probably the biggest manufacturer to make the most moves is gonna be Agama. I think Agama is really gonna go pretty heavy and pretty hard yeah they're going to pick up, up some drivers more drivers yeah mm -hmm. so Agama yeah so Agama will make big moves I think TLR is going to make big moves this year I think they already you are know, they, 
I just have a hunch. I can I see local people switching, and I know last year they they went after people real hard, real aggressive to pick people up, and a few mm-hmm. people switched then. And I think they're they're probably going to push pretty hard this year. Yeah, I agree with that. I think they will. I think me personally, I think the big name that's going to be talked about the most is going to be the Testmans. I think right. they're, they're going to be done with X-Ray this year. Wow. So I think they're probably going to go somewhere new. And really, in reality, the only two places they could go is either Associated or TLR. And I it would not surprise me one bit if they didn't end up at TLR. Huh. Wow, that uh, yeah, I mean that would because they got to take Gord too, so mm-hmm. that would and they well, need they and and there's been talk about um, there's been talk already about them getting a new team manager, so it would it would make sense and Gord would be able to fill that position. Tess think, would be able to drive. You think Kevin Gahan is out? Well, I don't. They're not going to fire him, but I think. See, he has a lot of responsibilities outside of being a team manager. Oh, okay. Um, at at uh, Horizon. Right. So I think they'll just reallocate him to different things, different projects. Uh huh. I think um, I think Horizon and AE are probably the only two that have the uh, bank account to. Yeah. Bring bring on that duo. Right, I agree. For sure. Yeah. And 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 honestly, AE doesn't need him. I mean no. Spencer is Spencer is killing it. I mean, he is doing so good this year. Yep. They yep. don't need him. I so. agree. I agree. I think Losi kinda they need they need a a, a boost. They they need a new face. Dakota, even though Dakota's done well this year, he hasn't finished well this year. Right. And so they need they're gonna need a spark and they're gonna need some new blood and Testaments would be the only ones that could really give them that drive. Yeah. So that that one won't surprise me one bit if if that didn't happen. What about Kyosho? Are they in in you know is their their bank account drained too much to bring on something like that to revive or uh, I don't you know it's wide open I don't, for them <laughs> you know, yeah they I don't, don't I don't think I just don't think that they have the racing budget that they want or need or I think their focus is going to be a lot of these fifty off deals and local sportsman guys and just giving those people sponsorships and not really have a big race team per se. Right. But, you know, who knows? Interesting. So what's JQ doing? Is he going to sign somebody? They're kind of like AKA. You know, AKA's in that same boat. Right. Where? Yeah. Is is JQ going to sign a a name? Is he going to finally do it? No. He's no. still. He don't have no fucking money. <laughs> uh, he's he's put it all into RCGP. Yeah, he really has. <laughs> so wow. no, I don't. I don't think he's he's working really hard on designing, kind of coming out with a new car. The end of next year, um, maybe the world's year. I don't know. He's he's got to design a new car. He's his is getting to be outdated. It right. needs it needs some improvements. Right. Um, yeah. Otherwise they're just, you know, every all the other manufacturers are coming out with new stuff and he isn't. So maybe he needs a pro kit. He needs a pro kit. He really does. <laughs> <laughs> he really does. <laughs> He needs to. He needs to do some improvements. <laughs> oh, so, what? I mean, the what? car is the car is good and it's decent, but it can be so much better. Right. But he just—I don't know if it's a money thing, and he doesn't have the money to 
do, do the improvements that it needs, or if he's uh, yeah, an e- no ego idea. thing, maybe. And who knows? <laughs> he don't talk to me anymore, so well, I don't, the, you know we're right. the The big question of silly season is what is Jeff Keaton doing for twenty twenty? I don't know. My my contract JQ's up this year. So I mean I could freelance it and just see for me personally, as much as I'm racing now, I don't need a chassis sponsor. Like right. a chassis sponsor for me is kind of pointless. It really is. Yep. Because I have enough contacts in the RC industry where I can get, you know, I can get my kits at 50 off. Any any kit I want, I could get, you know, at 50 off. And then parts I can get, you know, discounts through hobby shops or wherever. You know, it's not like it's not like a chassis sponsor does anything for me. Right. The only the only sponsor that I personally need is a tire sponsor. So. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the hardest one to get. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. So yeah, I have no idea. I mean, if 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 JQ like if JQ is gonna invest in the car and and do improvements on the car. I'm all about staying with JQ because I do like the car, but it does need work. But if he's not, and it's going to be another two years before he gets around to it, then um, then who knows? I might try something else. Right. Well, you know, you wouldn't be nearly as famous as you are now if it weren't for driving the JQ car this year. Um. Yeah, I don't agree with that one. But. <laughs> <laughs> and fame, fame, fame is really kind of a. Let, let's be honest. What what is fame? So for me, fame is just being a jackass, and I've been a jackass pretty much my entire life. So JQ didn't make it any better or any worse. It just made it more so. You know, <laughs> it put your jackassedness in the spotlight. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, well, but, that whole you know, that knows? whole thing's been fun to watch right from the start. As soon as it has as been, as soon been. as he announced he was bringing on the shit fountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. I, <laughs> I mean, was it's like, been fun, and it's been a good year. And my personal results this year have been really good with the car. So, I, I mean, I I have have absolutely no complaints about my decision um, running for JQ this year. And if I stay with them for next year, I wouldn't have any regrets on that either. But it's just, you know, I want, I like progression. And I like it when manufacturers make changes and make improvements and continue to evolve. Right. Right. And as long as he's willing to do that, then I I like it. But yeah, I have yeah. yet to see anything change since the day that I bought my first kit. Right. It gets stale after a while. Yeah. I mean, right. shit, even you guys came out with a new car. I mean, <laughs> and your, your other one wasn't that old. No, it wasn't. So no. Associated, you know, I left Associated, and Associated's constantly redesigning their shit. I mean, they've had they've had three different A-arms this last year. Right. You know? Constantly making improvements. And I like that. That's what they gotta do. mm -hmm. That's that's how you get get to be the best. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw a little something today. What is going on or is there going to be a change with the JQ representation in the Northwest. Is oh, that anything, I, that, is anything I changing? Is. You think so? Yeah, I mean, they they wanted me to take on a bigger role as far as that goes, and I said, no, I'm not. I'm not the person for that. Right. One, I don't. Um, even though I I like the car itself, I still have 
questions regarding the company. And so it's, you know, how can I be a bigger role in the JQ Northwest group when I'm not a hundred percent behind the company? Right. So, you know, that's not, that's not fair to them because. No. And I, th- I think that's a know, big problem within the industry as it is as a whole is people wanting these deals and wanting to be so it's such and such for it for the company and they don't really believe in the company to begin with so they're just taking right, these deals right. for for the deal exactly right so and and status like a lot of them want the ego or the status oh i'm the i'm the northwest regional rep for xyz company right but they couldn't tell you half of what the XYZ company sells, you know, or what they're, you know, they, to me, if I'm going to take on a role like that or a position like that, then I have to be all in and a hundred percent behind what's going on. Exactly. And especially in the JQ case, I mean, JQ has me blocked on Facebook. Like, how can I, <laughs> how can I go to bat for a company where the owner fucking hates me? You know? Right. Yeah, that's so. That's that just hard. doesn't make sense. Right. Right. But the fact that they even offered it to me is still amusing. Right. You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> you're JQ the only one they know on up Facebook. here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't fucking like you, but you're the best they got. So we're just gonna have to go with it. Well, no, I'm not like that. You know. <laughs> Oh man, so I so we're gonna see a change here in the Northwest as far as that's concerned. I see. Yeah, I'm sure there will be. I can. I I saw that today and I was like, oh okay, something's changing. So. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. All right. But there's. I think that's the new. That's the new trend too, where people, the manufacturers themselves, are doing these regional reps where yep. they get, you know, one big regional rep for that area and then all the sponsorships kind of go through that person and you well, you know, know associated's done that for years mhm yeah for years and you know we've been doing it here with serpent now for i think well it's, we're we're just coming up on our one year of doing that here so uh, i don't see it changing unless there's something that i don't see going on but i think it's going to continue the same well they're not going to tell you they're going to fire you until they fire you and you know come well on that's now. true no that's, that's true. but you're doing a good job so i don't think you have anything there's nothing to worry about there i ha- i have my days i have my days there's there's days where i'd yeah. i'd fire myself if i was the boss but <laughs> uh yeah well it'll be interesting it'll be it'll it'll be a good silly season i think there'll be there's a few good drivers that i think are gonna be up for grabs and yeah, i think well, it'll be uh it'll be interesting regionally here in the northwest um i don't see uh taylor going anywhere he's got the new techno so i don't see him skipping out um who in the Northwest could be making moves? I don't know. I don't. I think from from the feel that I've got, everybody's pretty happy with their brace programs. You yeah, know, I think. You know, I know that. You know, there might be some tire stuff. I mean, we're we want to take on some new people at J Concepts, so. Right. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be some tire stuff, but as far as chassis go, I don't think chassis are going to be that big of a change. No. No, and Austin. Do we know anything about Austin? What's Austin doing? Is he sticking with uh, what he's got? Or maybe he'll be the team manager. I don't know. Maybe Maybe, he will be. Maybe he'll step up. (laughs) Somebody needs to. Yeah. Yeah. Keenan can't do it all, (laughs) even though he tries. He does try. I'll give him that much. He, uh, man, he was so busy at RCGP. Oh my God, I am so glad I was not in his shoes. Mm-hmm. Wow, he was busy. For a guy that does nothing, he sure does a lot. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I think it'll be fun. So we'll uh, we'll we'll talk again before um, before the fallout race. Okay. Kind of gets closer and see who all's going. We'll have to lay down some bets and some. 
you know, proposals and see what's going to happen. There you go. We got a diehard race next weekend, so that will be taking up a lot of my time with the new car and and all the team and stuff. So I don't know. Yeah. We'll try to record something now that I've got this figured out, and we'll see if it actually works out after we post uh, it. You up. ain't got nothing figured out yet. So let's be honest. <laughs> Well, it's recording something, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. <laughs> All right, sounds good. All right, buddy, thanks for coming on, and we'll uh, we'll talk to everybody in uh, I don't know a week or so, hopefully. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Talk to you later. Goodbye, everybody. It was fun finally getting back on here, and we will hopefully be able to figure this out and get it posted, because I'm technologically challenged, and so uh, try to keep warm and keep the rubber side down.